Okay, I'd like to introduce to you Alhan Kesser. He's our CMO. He actually started our marketing team here. Um, he's going to share with you 13 online marketing trends for 2013. Thank you for coming. Um, if you found out about Blue Fountain Media uh, through our website by searching for, for a company like ours, uh, it's likely thanks to uh, the work of my team and I. I'm the CMO of the company. Um, you know, I my entire job is dedicated to bringing in traffic uh, from search, from display, and turning that into leads. Um, so today, I'm going to give you some tips on uh, what 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 you should do this year if you're going to do anything, if you're going to do anything new this year, what to focus on to get ahead of your competition. So the goal here isn't just to give you a bunch of tips and then you go home and you know go back to work and you know keep on going. Um, I want you to write some things down and say, hey, I'm going to do this next week. I'm going to start this project next month. Uh, come out of here with some specific action plan of, of what you're going to do. You know, Come talk to our business consultants um, if you have any questions about anything I'm going to present. So 13 online marketing trends for 2013. Now, uh, I didn't see any hands go up so far during the two presentations, so I want to get that done. So everyone, please put your hands up. Everyone, just put them all up. Yep, great. Now, no, keep them up, keep them up. All right, now, uh, anyone who knows what, um, if you don't know what responsive website design is, put your hands down. If you don't know what universal analytics protocol is, put your hands down. Okay, I got some, okay. Uh, if you don't know what HTML5 is, put your hands down. Okay, great. So we got some people who know quite a bit. All right, well, you can just go home now. <laughs> Here, let me make this full screen. I'm going to be driving the show. Okay. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Everything will be available, but um, at a cost. All right, so. Um, companies since the internet came out have always been focused on one thing, and that's traffic generation. We already know that. You know, everyone knows about SEO, social media. You know, doing a bunch of campaign ads, getting a bunch of traffic. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is about some some ways in which now we can much better track that traffic, um, as well as improve our targeting to end up with a better ROI overall. So first of all, the, the first trend, um, not trend, but something that's going from early adapters into a more mass market um, situation is user-centric analytics. So right now, uh, we've got a sort of session-centric view, right? We know, OK, we get a bunch of visits from Facebook, all right? We get some visits from Search, and those convert. You know, we, we make some sales there, perhaps. Um, oh, sorry about that. And then we might get some return visits from email. And we see those each as separate sort of uh, segments of traffic that come in, do something. Uh, right now, you know, we're not getting the full picture of, of the entire user path. So when a user first discovers our site to the moment when they become a repeat customer, we don't see that pathway. Uh, but th that's quickly changing. Um, you know, right now there are tools out there that allow you to track someone from the first day they visit, and every single uh, you know repeat visit from then until they become a customer. So then you'll know how you know how you obtain those uh, really important customers, the customers that keep on buying, that keep on coming back. Same goes with your leads, your major clients. How did they find out about you? What was the first step, the second step, the third step? That way you can better attribute value to those different marketing channels. You know, the same goes for other visitors who maybe don't turn into long-term prospects. So there's some tools to help you with that. Kiss Metrics, Monetate, uh, and Google Analytics is coming out with a sort of a new protocol in terms of how to track visitors across devices from mobile to desktop, as well as uh, across uh, sort of a long-term multi-channel campaign. Number two, content marketing. 
Uh, Leslie talked about that in length. Um, you know, the, the basic idea is create engaging, relevant content with the goal of uh, generating business. You create that content, it gets shared, it gets liked. You, you get noticed by influencers in your industry. Others link to it. At the end of the day, what you get is uh, improved search engine optimization. You've got more links. You've, uh, you, you're putting yourself out there as a thought leader, especially for B2B companies. And you grow trust among your visitors to your website. Having great content always helps with conversions. Next, uh, integration of search and social. If you're doing any sort of search engine optimization, you have to be paying attention to social now. It's no longer just about putting a bunch of content on your page and getting links. Uh, back in 2001, all that really mattered was how many keywords could you stuff on one page. Your links uh, were not as much of a factor. As time goes on, uh, links became a much greater factor. And today, social plays a role as well. How many people uh, share your page, uh, you know, Google+, Plus, your Facebook likes, all these uh, have a factor. For example, just uh, if you look at your search result click-through rates, um, having an author uh, on there with, you know, with the Google Plus integration on Bing, having likes, uh, Facebook likes, beneficial. So that's going to make a big difference in terms of your search engine optimization. All right, number four, backlink cleanup. If you've done SEO in the past or you're doing SEO now, you're going to want to look and see to make sure that the, the links pointing to your website from other sites are not spammy. The spammy ones you're going to want to ask for removal of or to use the uh, Google disavow tool. So a spammy site might look something like this, SEO-friendly web directory, a uh, site with very little value, and what would be considered as sort of a low-value spam site by Google. Um, they ha there's a new Google disavow tool that allows you to say, hey, I don't want these links, these spammy links counting against me. What can happen is your site can be penalized for having spammy sites linking to it, even if it's not your fault. Number five, improved display targeting. It used to be that you could only target by keyword or by some, you know, some very loose demographic measures. Today, you can go after, especially for B2B market, uh, go after industry, go after company size, job function, seniority, and you can even e upload your email list of prospects and show them display advertising. This is all possible right now. So if your competitors aren't doing this, this is your chance to get ahead of them. Number six, display remarketing. So this is where someone visits your website, and then you follow up with display ads after they leave. What's great about this is uh, imagine you spend $10 in paid search to get someone to your website. Well, why not take, that, take those dollars a little further and spend another 20 cents to get them back to your site for a second visit? Because on that second visit, they are much more likely to turn into a lead or a customer. So your ads will appear wherever they go at the frequency at which you decide and uh, for as long as you decide. So you can, uh, you can do this um, with Google AdWords right now. It's cap you know, it has the capability uh, built in. Number seven, email re-engagement. Uh, how many of you have been to an e-commerce site, started to check out, put some products in your, in your cart, left, and then started getting emails with your products in the cart? Nice, yeah, quite a few people. So this is something that now I think a lot of smaller e-commerce sites are going to start taking advantage of. It's a no-brainer. Someone's putting items in their cart, you get their email, there's an automated way you can just Follow up with them 24 hours later, two days later, a week later. 
You know, it, it doesn't require any manual labor once you've set it up. So that's re email re-engagement. Someone comes to your site, you capture their email in any form. This works for uh, lead gen companies as well, not just e-commerce. Uh, it could be a newsletter sign up. If it's the first step of the checkout process, you want to make sure your email is the first uh, field that gets filled out. Number eight, search retargeting. So you may be doing paid search where you're bidding on keywords, and, and you know that's great and all, but wouldn't it be great to know what keywords that person searched before that keyword? To know if they've been searching for a lot of related terms, you may want to bid higher uh, for certain users. So here's an example. Say someone looks up degree in economics and then searches for business schools NYC a little later. Uh, a school like Columbia University might want to really outbid their competitors on that one. That's a really a much more uh, quality, uh, sorry, quality lead than someone who just looks up business schools. Someone looking for a specific degree. It's a degree they offer. It's what they're good at. So that's, that's a much more worthwhile uh, lead to get. Number nine, mobile advertising. So nothing new here, but uh, this is the year to take advantage of it. Uh, you know, 50% of, of adult population has a smartphone or a tablet and prices are low. Talking about advertising, both search as well as display. There are a few competitors, especially uh, you know if you're not one of the the Fortune 500 companies, which means it's a huge opportunity. So I wouldn't wait another year to get into mobile to say, hey, you know, it's not it's not that big a deal yet. No, this is the time when you can really take advantage of it ahead of your competitors. Number 10, responsive design. So this is where you have a website that can adapt to every screen width. You don't need to build three or four different websites to fit a, a smartphone, a tablet, a, smart, a small tablet, a large screen. You have, your, you have one website that adapts. Uh, and that's just recently been possible. Um, this has become even more important now because AdWords just announced that they're going to treat tablet traffic the same as desktop traffic. That means that if you're running a paid search campaign and your website only works on desktops and doesn't work very well on tablets, you're now going to get tablet traffic. and You cannot filter it out. So if your links are too close together, they're not very easy to use with a thumb. Uh, if you've got any flash, uh, you might want to make sure your site is tablet compatible. Uh, responsive site just takes care of that problem right out of the box. Number 11, HTML, CSS3 usage. You might be like, oh, who cares? Uh, I don't care if it's HTML1 or 2. Um, it does make a difference. Uh, you can avoid using JavaScript, a lot of extra images, Flash, by using HTML5. CSS3. Um, the the benefit, the reason you'd want to do that is speed. Uh, you know, you can reduce number of images, Flash, JavaScript, all of that uh, weighs down pages. Uh, it helps with accessibility. So accessibility to uh, mostly iOS products, iPhones, and SEO. All of that is any HTML content is crawlable by search engines, which makes it more readable. Number 12, web videos. But not just any web videos, web videos for lead gen. You can now embed a form in a video that shows up during any point during that video that says, oh, do you want to see more? Or to get this exclusive offer, whatever it is, enter your email or take some sort of action. You can put a call to action in there. Whatever it is, you can now take your videos and make them a lot more useful for your lead gen uh, process. 
And finally, my favorite, conversion rate optimization. Now, this isn't anything new. This has been going on for, for years. Uh, but what what makes a big difference? What made a big difference here is that uh, late last year, when the presidential campaign was uh, about to end, um, a Romney campaign marketing uh, director got on CNN and started talking about conversion optimization. I was like, "Wow, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is great," <laughs> uh, because the day that every marketer is fully aware of the power of conversion rate optimization is the day that uh, websites re will really evolve to suit the needs of users um, and, and just improve in a smart way. Uh, because, yeah, sure, you can redesign a website completely and not really find out if, if the new version is doing any better than the old, or you can make progressive changes over time testing each and single one, learning each each time, uh, and, and actually gaining knowledge from the changes you make to your website. Here's an example, right? So that's just to explain how conversion optimization works. Uh, you, you, you make a change to your website, um, and instead of just launching it to, to every user, you send random samples of your traffic to different variations. So one example is, um, Here's a company that does, uh, I think they're diaper wipes, diapers, yeah. Um, and you know something as simple as an image on a page, right? You have a baby looking at towards you, right? Um, or a baby looking at the text, right? Not a big deal. Um, this test was done by a eye tracking software company, and here's what happened baby looking at you, people focus on the baby's face. They don't really read the text so much. Baby looks at the text, all of a sudden, there's a lot more reading going on. So again, baby looking at you, baby looking at the text, right? I mean, would you even think twice about this as you're designing your website for the first time? You just put a photo of a baby up, right? I mean, who cares, right? Well, <laughs> it makes a big difference. <laughs> So these are the, s the the small little tests you can you can you can do you can run and 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 something like this affects your your print campaign and your 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 web campaign and your TV campaign everything the same the same sort of rules apply same goes with the messaging you can change the text you can change any of the calls to action so always be testing so that concludes my look at what's um, under the iceberg. So who here is just doing what's at the tip of the iceberg in terms of online marketing? Okay, so you're all saying that you do all these 13 things. Is that what I, what I need to understand? All right.